Here is the updated design of the cam crusher. And the way I have it held up right now is with one shoulder length sling. I have a groove in at the top and these are holding my panels and it has enough wiggle room to just at least not fall out when it's not um, being held in by a cam. The bottom has just enough here to be rigid, maybe only one inch thick. The plate, I assume, would be about a half inch thick, so it might actually sit inside of it, but most of the time it would not. And you can see that these two inner plates can be tapered, tapered, tapered. And it would have four bolts, um, probably probably bigger than half inch. Um, this, I could give you whole dimensions and everything. I'm, I like the idea of having the tabs, um, but connecting it to, let's say, a line scale three is the crux, right? Now, I would connect this to the line scale three with the soft shackle, but the problem is you have a cam crusher dangling again. Pros and cons. Um, it's really hard to just mount this to, well, the tree, if that's what we're using. Um, and it might be nice if I did mount it to have flanges sticking out right here on both sides to have uh, like a third point and then a center bolt. But I don't know if I like mounting it because that means I have to drop a line scale three with the sample in order to read the force, which I might be able to actually get this built into my frame of the dummy. So it actually might not be the end of the world if I had to do that. But uh, for now, I might just dangle. And if it's in the uh, slack snap machine, um, then it would literally literally look like that and it would just be pulled that way now if i wanted to pull over an edge just use a cam that fits in there for now um i wouldn't be able to do it with the big guy um i don't know what i don't know if i want to build this to try to test over an edge quote unquote i'd rather like add add a piece that i could make the edge and change the edge but at this point, we've already done edge tests, um, and it usually just breaks either the cable or the sling, like it's less force. Now, what's nice is if I could get some pressure plates back inside of here, um, ideally just scales that maybe have an external reading, something that's not too expensive, right? Because I wouldn't need something more than 500 pounds. Because I could just, like, it's four times the force, supposedly. And if I put a 100-pound weight on this, I would, I just don't need something that fancy. And it'd be nice if I could have two scales, maybe a little eyelet cut out here so you could read it um, and then apply force, change the force angle, change around a corner and see how much force is being applied versus a nut or a tricam. So if you have a flake, it'd be nice to understand how much um, force you're exerting on the flake and how you to mitigate that. Now you can see that I did add this piece in here because uh, so many people thought it would flex. Now, I don't think it's such a problem, right? You can see that like a number four fit uh, just fine in there um, as far as height goes. Now, remember I originally wanted to just be able to test smaller stuff. That's like my biggest problem right now. If I wanted to test a number five, I technically could use the other cam crusher. But you can see that this thing is more than twice as tall, more than twice as deep, and way wider than it needs to be. And so this entire setup is a six inch C channel. And I bet you, not even, it's not even six inch C channel. I bet we could go with the three inch C channel. Um, Cause even this thing, let's say all the way out, is three inches, but you got to have room in there for the plates, at least a half inch plate, right? And you want, you would want to be able to at least tip this guy out. Now the benefit to using, let's say, well, four inch channel might get us um, all the way to a number four. Let me slide that over, Let me mount this and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay. So obviously number two fits really well. A number four 
fits. And of course, you're not going to tip out a number four, but I'm okay with that. And then I even was able to get, ironically, barely, a number five. And that just shows like how big that is. And I'm not really trying to test a number five. It would be nice to be able to test a number four. And that means we only need five inches inside. And right now this is six and a half. Um, I'd say the if the width was tighter, then as far as dimensions go, let's say a tipped out three only requires... Um, I don't know, like three and a half inches, three and three eighths. So a half inch plate on either side is only a four. It would only have to be about, yeah, let's say five inches outside to outside dimensions, right? If this is like half inch thick, it could be quarter inch thick maybe. So it could just be narrower. As far as depth, we can see that from inside dimensions from here to the bottom, it's like five-ish, and it could be like three-ish, because here it is about less than three. Let me put this uh, fully over it. Let me get, check it out a little bit better. So as far as depth goes, be about that would be the most. The inside dimensions three inches covers this but you can see that it's not touching right there so technically if i stuck a four inch guy in here if i had three inches three inches is right where it's touching so it's pushing out maybe like three and a half inches deep but right now my inside dimension is almost five so a three and a half or a four four inches this way and as far as we already covered width, depth, height, the thickest cam we have here is three and a half inches. And right now I'm wasting two full inches. Think about like this thing was way more narrow. Now I want it to be stable, but like this plate could literally be half as, half as wide. So yeah, if it was more like this. I think that'd be fine. Now, I would want to be able to place something like this. So in that situation, let's pull out our biggest one. And if I placed it straight in, and then I wanted to test, drop testing it. Uh, let's punch out on that guy. Let's say this is in the drop tower. Put it in this way, and then I want to load it. In order to do that, it would have to be uh, whatever we said the depth of that was, four inches um, the other way. And that would allow a, a cam to go in straight and then out, but there's no more than you would need in that. So if we shrunk this whole thing up one inch in all directions, at least, then I'd be able to test anything. Now, I would want this side to be able to be removed for if I do test uh, angles where it's cockeyed, where it goes in like this and I pull it especially if I had um, rocks that had little pockets in here or I can like create a piton scar. That would be really cool in order to pull this way and then down. I don't want this here or I do for the edge, but um, this definitely would need a, maybe a carriage bolt coming through here. I don't necessarily care if it sticks out, but um, yeah, a carriage bolt might be flush enough in order to keep these plates doing their thing and be able to go all the way retracted in order to get the largest cam possible in there. But I think four connection points, one bolt for mounting, maybe a tab here for other mounting if so desired. The problem with the tab is if I want to set it down, it might limit what I can do. Um, the question is, this is flimsy and it's obviously just cardboard. I know metal would be stronger, but of course you can see that the that might be a thing. I don't know if it's worth adding a little bit of metal right here just to help control the, the flanges. But I think that's all I got for now for our latest cam crusher.